May the Lord be with you. I'm Pastor Richard Ziley. I have the privilege of uh, leading you in the praise of our Lord this morning uh, as we meet him in the Word and Sacrament. <clears throat> Please note the uh, white sheet has the psalms and prayers uh, for the service and the, the listing of hymns. Uh, the order of service is page 203 in the front of the hymnal, so you may wish to place your bulletin there to hold full place um, for the order of service. Uh, before we continue, are there announcements that need to be made from parish organizations? I think that's a wall here. Yes, choir practice immediately after the service at the back of the church. Very good. All right. I see it. Yes, Laura? Yeah, just a, a reminder that the uh, annual women's um, of the year down in the
page 203. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered here to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. We may kneel. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We may stand and share a greeting of peace. Peace of the Lord be with you. Peace of the Lord be with you. We turn to the intro. Be thou my strong rock, for a house of defense to save me. Thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore I may say, and guide me. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me from thy righteousness. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, 
with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we beseech thee mercifully to hear our prayers, and having set us free from the bonds of sin, defend us from all evil. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, our Savior, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. We may sit for the reading. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, starting with the first verse. If I speak in the tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have not, and if I have prophetic powers, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, as so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, to have that love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoice with the truth. Love bears all things believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, and I shall know fully, even as I have been known, fully known. So now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. But the greatest of these is love. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Merciful God and Father, who does require of us fervent love of thee and our neighbor, we humbly beseech thee, graciously govern us by thy Holy Spirit, that we may never offend against love, nor devote thy gifts to our own glory and profit, but according to thy good pleasure and for our neighbor's welfare, growing continually in true love, faith, unfeigned, through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. We sing Psalm 146 responsibly. Please note the congregation begins. We'll hear the tone and then sing.
watches over the soldiers. He upholds the widow and the fatherless. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations, praise the Lord. Who 
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our text is the Gospel for this day, Luke 18, which has been read. We may sit. I have to apologize not having a, an outline for you today. I was on a plane from Phoenix and arrived at uh, about 4.30 this morning. Um, so if I see if I miss a beat here, you'll forgive me. The disciples lived by faith in Jesus because they followed him blindly. As a blind man is led by a seeing child with no means of confirming that child's guidance, so the disciples followed a Lord they did not comprehend. They proceeded by trust, completely dependent upon him. Does that sound like our Christian walk? I think it does. Our Lord explained more than once what he was about, as he does in today's text. He even expresses the invitation for them to see. He says, and I quote our text, see. We are going up to Jerusalem, and everything that is written about the Son of Man by the prophets will be accomplished. For he will be delivered over to the Gentiles, and will be mocked, and shamefully treated, and spit upon. And after flogging him, they will kill him, and on the third day, he will rise. But they did not see. As the text expresses it, this saying was hidden from them. They are characterized more as victims rather than as being at fault. There follows an incident in Jericho, subtly related to the disciples' inability to see what Christ was talking about. A blind man publicly calls on Jesus for mercy. What mercy? To receive sight. It was an awkward situation. Actually, Jesus had attracted followers, and some were the sorts who had followed others in the past. Some of Jesus' own disciples had been followers of John the Baptist, who had confronted the government in the person of Herod Antipas and ended up with his head chopped off. And one of the disciples was a zealot, member of a party that advocated the overthrow of the Roman government. And had Jesus' followers tried to proclaim him king after he purportedly fed 5,000 of them in the wilderness opposite Capernaum. And now this beggar calls, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Perhaps this blind beggar did not realize the implications, but son of David was a royal title, implying that Jesus should be king. Wasn't he always talking about the kingdom of God? And the cry, have mercy on me, which in Greek is Kyrie eleison. This is how people acclaimed Caesar when he made visits. And it might be answered with a mercy in the form of a coin tossed out to the crier in the crowd. <clears throat> this is why the crowd urged that beggar to be silent. They knew political trouble when they saw it. But Jesus did not back down from the challenge. He halted the progress and called for the beggar to be brought before him as a petitioner to a king at court. Jesus asked him before all those who were assembled, what do you want me to do for you? The beggar replied, Lord, let me recover my sight. We may infer from this language that this beggar had not always been blind. He uses the words recover to get back something that was lost. God had intended all his children to see, not only temporal things, but that which transcends the present moment, beauty, truth, 
good. And since God intended us, his children, to see what transcends the temporal, he made us, in other words, to see himself. We are meant to see the ultimate beauty, the ultimate truth, the ultimate goodness of God. An experience that leads directly to joy and praise. This Jesus had come to restore to us, to restore to us the ability to see the highest good, the most real thing, the eternal God, the ground of all being, the creator of the cosmos. To signify this, he restored sight to this blind man. Like all the miracles of our Lord, the mercy is intended not only for the person healed, but for all the bystanders, including you and me, who can recall it through the written word. We too are blessed through the miracle so performed. Not just the beggar, but we ourselves can see in a way that we could not see before. We see Jesus as the Savior who can rescue us from our blindness and every other woe. We can see Jesus as the true King whose rule transcends space and time. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me, says the King of the kingdom of God. Therefore, make disciples of all nations. What is the first thing this blind beggar sees after his eyes are healed? He's, his blessed eyes see Jesus. Do you see yourself in this beggar? You and I will close our eyes in death. We will lie in the grave, dead to all beauty, dead to love, dead to truth, return to dust because of our sin. But the day will come when Jesus will return to judge the living and the dead. And we confess today, I believe in the resurrection of the body that when the Lord Christ returns, he will restore all things to his Father's intent. And though worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh I will see God. Like that blind beggar, our eyes will open and the first thing we shall see will be the glorious face of Jesus. And that will lead us to praise and glorify God. This is what that formerly blind beggar of Jericho did. He praised God and followed Jesus. This is the life of everyone who receives sight from the Lord. They see in Jesus the power and person of God. They follow him as disciple and publicly praise God for what he has received from the Lord. You know, people often speak of leaving church feeling uplifted and having after having thought about what God has done for us and, and after joining together in praise with others, don't confine that feeling to Sunday morning. Let every day have its time set apart, set aside for the praise of God, whether in praise or in conversation with others. Several times a day we can give thought and give thanks to God who has blessed us we can thank Him for sleep in the morning. We can thank Him for food on the table three or four times a day. We can thank Him for strength to work and opportunity to relax each and every day. It is a matter of opening the eyes God gave us and seeing His grace in everyday blessings. And by the eyes of faith, beginning to see the God behind each gift and each blessing. That beggar followed Jesus and he saw things he did not expect to see. He saw that everything written about the Son of Man by the prophets will be accomplished.
For he will be delivered over to the Gentiles and will be mocked and shamefully treated and spit upon. And after flogging him, they will kill him. And on the third day, he will rise. Make no mistake about it. Following Jesus is the way of the cross. And when our eyes are opened, we shall see some pretty ugly things on this earth. Like clouds, they may hide the sun at times. But after the cross, our formerly blind beggar beheld the resurrection. A greater miracle than even his own experience of healing. In that resurrection is the promise, because I live, you will live also. Because of that resurrection, the gateway to heaven is open. We can see our way clear. Clear to an eternity of blessing. Not by filling ourselves with ice cream or filling ourselves with all the, the, the earthly pleasures that we may lust for in this life. No, we will be cured of all that. We will see what is truly good and desirable. We will see God. And we are transformed in the vision and made fit for a life eternal, a life of joy and praise. May God fit us as we make the journey of Lent next week, that he may fit us, opening our eyes, enabling us to acknowledge what's wrong in the world around us and in ourselves, that we may be transformed by seeing Jesus on the cross and risen from the dead, the way of life eternal. Amen. Amen. May that peace of God that surpasses our understanding keep your hearts and minds in this true faith to life everlasting. Amen. The hymn of response is hymn 541. We may sit for this hymn.
Please sign the friendship register, the green pads at the ends of the pews. If you are accountable to me as minister in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and intend to receive Holy Communion, indicate this on the pad as well. Those who are not receiving communion are invited to receive a blessing by coming forth and crossing your arms, and then the elder and I will know to give you that blessing.
Lord, we pray for our personal witness and example and walk of life. We pray for our congregation where we encourage one another and work together. We pray for our association in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and the corporate work we do in sending missionaries and evangelists. Lord, we pray for those especially who have left security and family and comfort and language and culture to bring this good news to others. Lord, make us one with their work through our prayers and our offerings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our nation and our leaders, that they may be of God's servants for our good. We praise you, Heavenly Father, that you have given us government. And we ask, Lord, that you would bless the leaders of our government, our president, our governor, our judges, magistrates, and all public servants, that we may be delivered uh, from danger, that we may be encouraged in things for the common good. Therefore, give our leaders that wisdom, give them that courage to work for what is right and not merely for what is popular, and that we ourselves may walk as believers worthy of self-government. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. prayers. Let us pray for those who serve our nation in the armed forces. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, for these who are listed in our bulletin, and for their comrades and colleagues who undergo a hardship, difficulty, danger, that our liberties and our properties may be protected. Lord, we ask your blessing upon them, that you would deliver them from the temptations that come to those who wield the sword, and that we may properly acknowledge their service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let us pray for the troubled in heart or mind who are in need of our prayers. Heavenly Father, look with favor on those who suffer from depression or dementia, worry, anxiety. Lord, open our eyes to the opportunities we may have to share a word of encouragement or comfort or assurance. Lord, enable us to listen to those who are troubled in heart, that we may bear one another's burdens and so fulfill your law. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the sick and the shut-in and those who care for them. Lord, look with favor upon Lillian, Gage, John, Bill, Scott, Robin, Jackie, Sharon, Linda, Dave, Tia, Amy, Jean, Kenneth, John, Linda, Kate, Brian, John, Phyllis, Sharon, Mick, Clara, Mary, Sandy, Ruth Ann, Jeff, James, Linda, Lori. Lord, there are others we know a name in our hearts who are in need of healing of spirit as well as of body. And we ask especially for your blessing on Peggy Pegram, that she might have successful open heart surgery on Monday. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Prayer. Let us pray for those in the family way and those with young children. Heavenly Father, we give thanks that you have not given up on the human race, but you continue to bless us with children. We pray that you would bless those who are in the family way, that they may be delivered from anxiety and worry, and that they may that the joy may over, overcome the anxiety, that you would give a safe delivery through the pains of childbirth, and Lord, we pray for those who have the care of young children, that they may understand and that we might reassure them of the value of this care for human life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us give thanks and prayer for special blessings received. Heavenly Father, it has been a great privilege for me as pastor of this congregation to represent its radio ministry in Phoenix this last couple of days, and you have heard our prayers that I have been able to return safely and in time for this service. 
Lord, for, for these blessings of daily life, help us, and answered prayer, help us not to take them for granted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's ask God's blessing for a particular matter of concern. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would move the hearts of your people, that they might seek you in your word and sacrament. In this Lenten season, it is especially appropriate that we turn our hearts to you, humble ourselves, and receive your blessing. Lord, you know those in our community who, who need this, and we ask, Lord, that you would direct our efforts and our, um, our messaging to, to reach them with your message. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The liturgy continues on page 208. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.